Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hey, Joey. Hey. Good evening. Good to have everybody here. And Joe, I will let you lead us away. Well, thank you very much, Joey. And it's so good uh, to be back with everybody tonight. Uh, you may not could have heard him, but Mary Jean and her mom says hello to everybody. And uh, hello, Antoinette. I know you're watching out there and, and John Allen on Facebook land. Yep. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm not really sure who uh, gets credit for being the farthest away. <laughs> we'll have to do a map quest search on that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so good to see uh, be, or not see you, but uh, I feel like I can see you. Uh, but I uh, hope everybody's having a good week. I'm having a good week. Uh, I uh, I just told Mary Jean uh, a little while ago, I, lo I looked down at my phone, and I was trying to find a number from uh, Tuesday night, and my phone calls started at 7.45 yesterday morning. Uh, I, get, I, I have 100 phone calls that show up, so I've had 100 phone calls yesterday and today. Oh, gosh. Uh, not, not counting all the... Uh, uh, texts and emails I've gotten, so it, so it's been pretty busy for me. But uh, it's a it's a good day and today for me. And uh, but uh, anyways, uh, just a couple things. Uh, nothing has really uh, changed uh, church wide. We're still in the holding mode. Uh, I know that there have been some discussions. Uh, about uh, gathering up some things and doing some planning about when we are able to get back to church. And, and we look forward to that uh, day when we can see one another. Uh, it'll certainly be a, a different kind of, of church. Uh, I, I, I always try to encourage people to sit together and get close to one another. And uh, so we're just going to have to do the opposite. Uh, not sure who's going to have to sit in the corner, though, but uh, I've, got some, I've, got, I've got some good ideas. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, I, I'm going to uh, I'm, I, want, I want to read uh, some words from a song. Uh, if I uh, if I could, I'd sing it. But uh, before we pray and, and start here tonight, I want to uh, read the words of number 377. Most of you know that that is, uh, it is well with my soul. And uh, the first verse says, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul hey Antoinette wants to sing part uh, hey Joey yeah Antoinette wants to sing part of it hey Joey hey can you hear me yeah, that's what I was going to say, Mary Jean. Just told me that. So uh, I would say, I, I would say, Antoinette, take it away, or Joey, whatever, do whatever you got to do. Well, let me find. I don't know what number she is, so um, I'm going to unmute everybody. Antoinette, uh, what number? Just give me like the last four digits of your number. Hello, hello. There she is. What's the last four of your number? Four one two five. Okay. Okay, let me hold on here. Four, get, one, two, five. Yeah, get your vocal cords warmed up there. And whenever you're ready, you're the one leading us. Go, go for it. <clears throat> All right. Of course, I'm going to Baptist. All right. The bad thing is I'm going to Baptist him, though, so the number is different. That's okay. But... um. 
Because I know the first verse and I know the last verse, but I know there's at least one in between. All right. Well, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste a day when the fate shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumps shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Praise God. Amen to that. Thank you for sharing well, it. No, that's well, how about that little impromptu thing? I know uh, I was muted; you couldn't hear us, but the uh, but the 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 Dismute Trio over here in Asheville was the singing uh, background vocals. Yeah. Uh, Amen. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I, I, I just, <laughs> thank you I for letting love, me share. Well, just so you know, and everybody else knows, there, there's no such thing as letting anybody do anything in church. Uh, I mean, it's uh, thank you for obeying the spirit and uh, having the courage to step up and, and sing that. Uh, and I, I just love it when the spirit moves and uh, we, we allow God to work in our midst. Uh, and, and it just... Uh, it blesses my heart. Uh, you know, a lot of times people uh, are uncomfortable with people uh, interrupting the sermon in church or something, and, and it's happened a few times. But, you know, every time it's just been a positive. It's always been something that uh, that God is glorified, and, and I truly believe that, that that's what church ought to be about. And and I know that my time being associated with everyone at Horton Bend, we believe in uh, allowing the spirit to have the freedom to move and just us getting out of the way and uh, allowing God to move in our midst. And uh, for those of you who, who may doubt that, God will move. 
uh, if we will just allow it to happen. And uh, so thank you, Antoinette, so much for everything. And thank you for uh, for all that you do. And thank you for your daily devotionals and uh, uh, spreading God's kingdom here on this earth. And uh, and I just want to tell you that from everybody at Horton Ben, we love you. And uh, appreciate you. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have anything? Or, or, or is everybody muted, Joey? Or where, where are we at? I just unmuted everybody. So if anybody else has anything, man, we'll talk away. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have anything else they want to share? Well, it is I good to be in the say, house of the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord, even if we're not together, because the Lord is definitely here. Amen. 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 Yeah. And as I am uh, prone to say, uh, uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, if you would, Joe, we'll, we'll read it. And we'll, uh, uh, we'll open with a word of prayer. Uh, most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now and uh, just want to thank you for the special time that we've already experienced here tonight. Uh, and we thank you for, for Antoinette and her her boldness to uh, allow the spirit to move and uh, not get in the way. And thank you for the blessing of that song, uh, the words uh, that it meant and uh, just the uh, the, the feeling that we get when we when, when we say when we sing it is well with our soul um and lord it's, it's my prayer tonight that uh, that each person within the sound of my voice wherever you are no matter how far it may be uh that you have a peace in your heart and and it is well with your soul and and you can experience the peace uh that i have in my heart Lord, I thank you for, for blessing us with another day. I thank you for, for this week that we've had. Thank you for an opportunity to uh, get together. And Lord, just ask you to just help us to all be instruments of your will here on earth. Lord, Lord may we be your, your feet and your hands and your mouth. Uh, may we be instruments of your grace here on this earth. Lord, we just thank you for all things and an opportunity to get together and study uh, these seven words of Pentecost tonight. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, we're going to get in to the Trevor Hudson book, Pauses for Pentecost. And uh, we are actually on starting on day 34. Uh, and I hope, uh, like me, you uh, you had an appreciation for some of these uh, toe-stomping words, uh, as uh, I heard growing up. Uh, a lot of these words will really uh, they'll stomp your toe, they'll they'll knock you right between the eyes. Uh, they're uh, attention getters, as I would say. Uh, and day one. Uh, uh, actually, day 34, but day one of this week, uh, our word was responsibility. There's a big word. And scripture from Acts says, brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we'll give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. <clears throat> In the early church, a, con a conflict developed between the Greek and Hebrew-speaking widows. The former claimed that they had been neglected in the distribution of food. This is a mundane matter that needs to be resolved with integrity and fairness. In response, the apostles formed a team of seven spirit-filled men to do the work. One of the men chosen was Stephen and is described as a person full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. 
he goes on, as you know, to become the first martyr in the early church. We do uh, many unspectacular and very unglamorous things like taking kids to school, making meals, creating spreadsheets, answering emails, sitting in business meetings, mending broken appliances, typing minutes of meetings, meeting with the clients, preparing lessons. And the list of ordinary activities goes on and on. While we may not think so, these things need just as much integrity and wisdom as the ministry is done by more high-profile spiritual leaders. Those who wait on the tables need the spirit just as much as those who preach. And if we were unmuted, I think we'd probably hear several amens to that. Uh, day one was the word was responsibility. Day day two, our word was encouragement. Recently, I have noticed how. Oh, let me go back and read the scripture. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, and that's from Acts chapter four. <clears throat> Recently, I have noticed how many of our conversations are riddled with discouragement. Discouragement about the political future of our country, about the work we do each day, about our closest relationships, and most painfully, about our journey with God. Few things have more power to rob us of joy and happiness than being discouraged. The realization gets me thinking, as Easter people empowered by the Spirit, one of the most important ministries we are called to exercise today is the ministry of encouragement. One of the unsung heroes in the early church is Barnabas. Joseph is his real name, but as the apostles watch over him interact with people, they rename, rename him Barnabas, which means son of consolation or son of comfort. How did Barnabas exercise the ministry of encouragement? Well, the author goes on to mention three different uh, things in, 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 the, in his writing for today. But I just want to stop and say that uh, from a personal level, uh, I can tell you that uh, being a pastor of a church is not an easy thing to do. Uh, although you've heard me say, pastoring Horton Ben is easy, and it is easy. And, and one of the reasons that I that I feel like pastoring Horton Ben is easy is because of all the words of encouragement that I get from everybody. Uh, not that I don't get my uh, uh, suggestions or uh, recommendation to do things better, and, and those are fine. Uh, but for the most part, and I would say far exceeding any criticisms that I get, I hear words of encouragement. Uh, and, and I tell you, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, for being so encouraging and helpful. Uh, it makes it a true blessing uh, to be your pastor. And uh, thank you for being so encouraging to me and my family. Thank you very much. Okay, day three. Uh, our word is power. The scripture from 1 Corinthians says, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. <clears throat> Most of us limp in one way or another. Our limp could be something physical, an addiction to some su stu substance, an emotional wound from the past, a quirk of personality, or a problem in relationships. Whatever it is, 
our Achilles heel continually reminds us that we are not totally whole and healthy. But while it may cause us distress and despair, the good news is that our point of weakness is where God's Spirit wants to empower us and make us stronger. Certainly, Paul the Apostle would affirm this truth. He knows that God is a God of power. Twice in today's verse, he refers to the power of God and God's Spirit. But he also knows that God's power will be shown in his weakness. We know by his own admission that he is not eloquent and captivating as a public speaker, yet he is convinced that God can work miracles in the spite of his limp. Elsewhere, he writes concerning his struggle with a thorn in the flesh, like that the Lord has said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. From Second Corinthians. How would you describe your own limp, your own Achilles heel? We don't have to hide it, pretend that we have life altogether, or allow our limp to disqualify us from God's work. It is pre precisely at our point of weakness that we can become spiritually strong. The crucial thing is to acknowledge our limp, share our struggle with our sisters and brothers in the faith, and trust God's grace to help us do what we cannot do in our own strength. Our lives can become, like Paul's life, an example of the Spirit's power. After all, this is what it means to live as Easter people empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the daily practice for day three was to share your Achilles heel with the Lord and with one other person you trust. Ask God to help you anticipate the power of the Spirit where you limp. <clears throat> day four, the word was water. Scripture from John 7 says, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Biblical writers repeatedly associate the Holy Spirit with water. This shouldn't surprise us. Living in arid areas often characterized by dryness and drought. They know from firsthand experience how they depend on the availability of water. Where there is water, there is always the possibility of fresh life. Water's absence means famine. As a result, in their search for symbols that will speak of the life-giving activity of God's Spirit, they naturally think of water. Water will come to symbolize the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, bringing life to a dry and thirsty land. In Jesus' words, he promises the gift of living water. Unlike water that stands and becomes stagnant, living water refers to receiving a certain kind of life from his spirit, life which is continuous, always flowing, and never ending. Jesus makes the bold claim that through the gift of the Holy Spirit, he can satisfy our thirst forever. His living water will not fail us, let us down, or run dry. Jesus' living water is a stream of blessing that bubbles from within us and flows through us to others. In the sometimes stifling and draining heat of daily life, this is surely one of our deepest needs. We thirst in so many ways. We thirst for meaning and significance for concentration and intimacy, for affirmation and acceptance. When our thirst goes unquenched, we find ourselves dried up inside. Our lives become empty and barren and sick with unfulfilled longing. Our need for the living water that Jesus promises, the water of his presence and never give up love, is profound. Two simple verbs guide us to a response to Jesus' promise, come and drink. We come to Christ as we are in need 
as we are in our need and in our longing. By faith, we drink his refreshing personal presence through his spirit. In this constant pattern of coming and drinking, our desert-like lives blossom forth again with the life that God's spirit gives. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> if you're following along in your book, you may have noticed that on day three and day four, I read everything that was written. Uh, I tried to consolidate it, cut it down a little bit, but I thought those two days were very powerful and had tremendous meaning and significance in there, and I wanted to share everything with everybody. <clears throat> now, we uh, just got finished talking about drinking, so obviously the word for day five is drunk. Ephesians 5.18 says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. This verse suggests that we can get drunk in two ways. We can get drunk with alcohol or with the Holy Spirit. Between these two options and their contrast, consequences are massive. While both certainly can make us happy, the first way leaves us unsteady and uncertain on our feet, while the second way fills us with a new steadiness and confidence as we face the difficulties of life. When drunk with wine, we think unreasonably, we slur our words, our sight becomes blurred, and we end up with a hangover. When filled with the new wine of the Spirit, we think more deeply, communicate more effectively, see more clearly, and experience genuine happiness. What intoxicates us? It could be wine, drugs, success, money, applause, work, anxiety, or fear. As we acknowledge whatever intoxicates us and yield the reign of our lives to the risen Lord, we open ourselves to a greater experience of the Holy Spirit. We become Easter people filled with God's Spirit. In day six, Revelation three, verse six, the word is listen. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I wonder what you think God's biggest complaint in the Bible is. A few years ago, someone explained to me what it is. It may surprise you as it did me. It is not that God's people don't pray enough or fast enough or are not good enough. According to Klein Snodgrass, after he had studied over 1,500 references to the words listen and hear in the Bible, God's biggest complaint is that people do not listen. If we do not obey God, it is proof that we have not really listened. The God we worship is the God who constantly wants to communicate with us. Nothing is more important for us than to hear what God may be saying to us through the pages of the Bible. Listening to the Spirit speak to us in the Bible is something we learn. We are not inherently good at it. We find it easier to read the Bible to gain more knowledge rather than to hear God speaking to us. God invites each of us to develop our capacity to listen in the Spirit's whisper. And day seven which is day 40 in the book, the day of ascension. Luke 24, 51 says, while Jesus was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. <clears throat> Goodbyes are painful. We all know departures only too well. Yet there is something intri intriguingly 
strange and wonderfully different about Jesus's goodbye. Gospel writer Luke tells us that when he withdrew from them, they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. The disciples have finally come to grasp who Jesus was and is. He is far more than just a, than a good prophet of God's reign or a brilliant teacher of God's values. They now know that in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, they have encountered the God of the Old Testament in a direct, personal, and firsthand way. Their only adequate response is joyful worship. But now he has to leave them and return to the heavenly realms. In the desolation and despair of our goodbye moments, let us draw courage from the ascended Christ. There is someone in heaven available to each of us in our pain who understands what it means to say goodbye. Wow. Well, there is our, our seven days. And uh, I think I'll start tonight and uh, do things a little bit differently. Uh, but I'll, I'll share with you uh, my two words. And uh, if, you, if you haven't guessed, uh, I think I'll be the first one to say tonight that the, all the words were good. Um, I think uh, every word so far through 40 days have been excellent and, and great words, great messages in each one. Uh, but day three and four for me this week, uh, power in the water. Uh, obviously, I, uh, I liked them a lot. They meant a lot to me. Uh, I read all the words that the author wrote down. Um, but I, I really um, can relate to the word power. Um, you've heard me say lots of times that that there is power in the scripture, uh, and there is. Uh, I think back to that Indiana Jones movie, The Raiders of the Lost Ark, and and the power that went along with the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, you know, the, uh, the Ark uh, was God's presence here on earth. And uh, when the Israelites had the Ark, they couldn't be defeated. It was having God's power in their midst. And, and I think something that, that we just don't realize today is that we have access to the exact same power. But we as Christians have to tap into it. And, and, and I think that's where we lack in a lot of ways doing that. So power, I guess, was, was my word for the week. Uh, has nothing to do with physical power. has everything to do with, with God's power. And, and, what, uh, I, and I just think of, of what, the, he, what he can do um, through us if we allow. Uh, and, and, and I can tell you there's proof of that. When you look at, at our church in Horton Bend, now we may be a small church, but I tell you, I wouldn't trade our congregation for any on the face of this earth because I think y'all are wonderful and I think that you are spirit filled and I think you love the Lord and you love to worship. And, and I'm just so thankful for the spirit in the church and the goodness of each of your hearts. And uh, I just want to say I love you. And I just want to remind everybody to, uh, when it gets to be your turn, uh, to share your prayer requests. Would love to hear a good thing that happened to you this week. Um, so uh, Joey's going to open it up. And when he does, uh, we're not going to go in any order. So who, whoever wants to go first, just speak up. And we'll just stay here as long as we need to. And uh, so whoever wants to go first, just jump ahead.
okay, I'm a, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be school teacher here, and I'm gonna start calling on you if somebody doesn't start talking. <laughs> well, this is Judy, and I'll go first if that's okay. Um, my word um, that I choose is encouragement because I feel like I'm an encourager, and I know to get encouragement in return blesses my heart and my soul. And uh, I've always been one to treat others as I want to be treated. So I like to encourage. Any prayer you are an encouragement. <laughs> um, just some unspoken prayer requests, please. Okay. Well, I guess I can be next. I don't know. Maybe somebody wants to go before me. <laughs> uh, this path. I tell you what, all these lessons are good, every one of them. But one of them that stuck out in my mind is the drunk thing. I have never been drunk on wine or alcohol, <laughs> never in my life. But I can tell you one thing, I feel like I've been drunk on the spirit before and I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. There you go. Uh, I mean, Amen. when the singing and the preaching and all that just fits together, there's nothing better than being filled with the Holy Spirit and feeling. And I just thank him for it. And I hope I listen enough and I use, do my responsibility of standing up for Jesus and and trying to teach my children to be that way. And please remember my sister. She's she was a little better today, but she's in she's in bad shape. And just pray for her. That's all I got to say. Except I miss Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. I think some of the times that Pat is drunk in the spirit is when she is over there um, playing the piano, looking up with her eyes closed and not missing a note. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I might miss a note, but yeah. mm, I've been there before. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm going to next. This is Mary Jane. Um, I will do mine. Um, the words that I like the most this week for water and drunk. Um, it just made me think about when it talks about the water, you know, this is spirit. There was a book that Max Lucado wrote some years ago called Come Thirsty. And, you know, God tells us to come just as we are. And yeah. when you come thirsty, you really drink in the Holy Spirit. It's not just, you know, just not that sip of water. It, you just drink and drink because you can't get enough yeah. and, and it says in the, in the thing for drunk it says we are filled with new wine of the spirit we think more deeply communicate more effectively and see clearly and experience genuine happiness and i believe that amen Okay, who's next? I'll go ahead and go. Um, probably the word that spoke to me the most uh, this week was listen, and a great reminder to me to um, to to speak less and listen more, especially when uh, God is trying to talk to me and I have all these distractions in my life and just to seek him out more. And so that was the word really that spoke to me the most this week and a, a great reminder to just be still and just to listen. Uh, 
Thank you, Joey. I, I know there's uh, a saying in there about having two two ears and one mouth. Yep. <laughs> Speak yeah. less, listen more. That's right. Okay. Any, anybody else got anything? Uh, John, okay. Alan, looks share. like we're going to have to get back. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Joey. No, I was going to say, um, John Allen shared a praise report in the uh, Facebook comments. Uh, he said he got his results back today, and he is COVID-free. So, praise God. For oh, that. that's great. Yes. That's a, that's a big amen. Yes. Way to go, John. And also, uh, Deborah and Dean Hallmark are watching along on Facebook as well. Hello, Deborah and Dean. I understand uh, you're doing you're doing well, Dean, and uh, so glad to hear that. And uh, uh, glad you're back home, Deborah. Good to have you with us tonight. Yeah. And, and I j just wanted to say, uh, you know. Uh, Singing on our our broadcast here is is not uh, only for Stan and Antoinette, uh, Dean. And if you feel like it and want to call in and sing on a Sunday or on a Thursday, you're more than welcome. Or Deborah, I'm sorry, I got corrected there. Uh, <laughs> sure. Um, okay, uh, anybody else want to share anything? Anybody else? Bueller? <laughs> Bueller? <laughs> okay, all right, I'll tell you what, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who uh, who joined in tonight and uh, who are making this very worthwhile for me. And uh, just want to say I love you, and uh, I'd love for us to, to close us in a, in a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we uh, come to you tonight, and uh, we're just so thankful that, that you love us or the names that have been mentioned tonight of course um, we lift up uh, linda farley uh, and her struggles lord we just pray that your hand of healing would be upon her and, or we lift we lift up our brother john allen who uh, got great results from his test this week and we thank you for keeping him safe and and, and ask your hand of protection upon him uh, today and in the future as uh, he uh, as he operates in a in a dangerous world and has a dangerous job, and we just ask you to watch over him, and we thank you uh, for doing that so far. Or we lift up so many unspoken prayer requests tonight. Or we uh, open our hands and we give them over to you, and we pray that your will be done. And uh, as in all things, Lord, uh, we just love you and thank you. And uh, of course, in Jesus' name we pray tonight. Amen.